Clash of Clans has been around for over a decade. Here's what it looked like when it was first released, and here's what it looks like now. So, how did we get here? It all started back in June of 2010 when video game developers Miko Kodosoya and Uka Pananen decided to start a new company called, you guessed it, Supercell. Uka Pananen and a small team were given free reign to create something fun. And then, boom! Clash of Clans was released exclusively to iOS on August 2nd of 2012. Originally titled Project Magic, the game was only barbarians attacking user bases, and Uka knew something was up when the team was addicted to this very basic but engaging gameplay. The game was simple. Build your base, protect your base, level up your base, and destroy other bases. So, of course, you invited your friends, you trained your troops, you competed, you won, you lost, you got mad, you uninstalled, you reinstalled, you built a better base, you trained better troops, you made a better attack strategy, you got addicted. The game was different. There was no other game like it on mobile. The graphics were decent, the max town hall level was only 8, and there were only a few upgrades, but the overall experience was unique. So, a few weeks after the release, the game had its first major update on August 30th, bringing forth new features including the Tesla, new decorations, and graphical improvements. This roped in many new players just in time for the next update that was released on September 19th, adding instant walls, replays, and the first three spells called Lightning, Healing, and Rage, as well as some other balance and bug fixes. Not even a month later, Supercell released yet another update on October 15th, giving players an option to send a personalized message to players when kicking them from their clan, as well as clan trophies as a requirement to join one. October 27th became their first seasonal update for Halloween. The update also removed the option to sell important buildings. A new defense tower, the Expo, was added along with a new spell called Jump and introduced Town Hall 9. What a time to be alive. November 19th was their next seasonal update for Christmas, and this update brought along big permanent improvements. The Christmas update covered the map in snow, added a bunch of seasonal decorations and features such as the Santa spell, and a limited edition Christmas tree that would continue yearly. The rest of the update included upgrade features to a bunch of resource buildings, barracks, spell factory, and army camps. It also added leaderboard changes, more space was added to the village, and defending clan castle troops were now able to jump over walls, instead of just standing there. Now, it's January 10th of 2013, and this update was huge. Heroes were added to the game, giving us the Barbarian King and Archer Queen. They didn't have any abilities back then, but they still required a new resource called Dark Elixir, and this could be obtained by the new drill and stored within the new storage. On the 5th of February, the game added two new traps, the Air Bomb and Seeking Air Mine, as well as unit upgrades and hero and gameplay improvements. Roughly one month later, Dark Elixir troops were introduced giving us minions, hog riders, who, by the way, used to attack anything, and Valkyries, along with the barracks to train these troops. The next update also added another new troop called the Golem on April 17th, as well as Leagues. A concept similar to that of ranks in other games, Leagues depended on how many trophies a player has during a season, including a loot bonus after every battle victory. The higher the League, the better the bonus. Moving on to May 23rd, Town Hall 10 just dropped along with a bunch of other goodies. The Inferno Tower was added to the game as well as attack logs and replays and major balancing tweaks and warfare improvements. June 17th gave us a new spell, the Free Spell, and a week later an extra gold mine and elixir pump was added for Town Hall level 10 users. The Witch was added to the next update on July 29th, which was broken. Back then, the Witch had a greater range and players could just spam all their Witches in one corner and gain a 3-star way too easily. Fast forward to September 30th and Edit Mode was implemented, allowing players to redesign their village from scratch. On October 7th, Clash of Clans was finally released on Android. And November 6th update allowed players to upgrade traps and spells were changed to cost Elixir instead of gold. Then, for the last update of the year, on December 5th, Clash of Clans gifted players for Christmas an update to the Inferno Tower that could target more than one enemy during an attack. 2014 started off with a bang, introducing abilities to heroes on January 29th. The Barbarian King's Iron Fist would become enraged and spawn a bunch of barbarians, and the Archer Queen's Royal Cloak could make her invisible to enemy defenses as well as spawn a bunch of archers. Clans could now also elect a co-leader, given the same privileges as a clan leader, except without the ability to demote or kick players. For a long time now, players had been wondering, where is the Clash against clans? Well, on April 9th, Clash of Clans finally made that possible with the release of Clan Wars, after two years of the game being available. 
In addition to the previous edit mode update, players could now save a separate war base in Clan Wars. On July 3rd, this update brought many balance changes, including that to heroes, as well as a new live spectating feature allowing players to watch as they attack. September 16th, we received a new Dark Elixir unit, the Lava Hound, along with level upgrades, replay improvements, and balancing. Moving along to October 22nd during the Halloween event, a new Skeleton Trap was added. And on December 11th for the Christmas update, players could now save multiple layouts of their village and war bases along with economy and combat balancing. So, that was 2014, and wow, time really does fly. 2015 moved by pretty quickly too, starting the year off with a major clan overhaul. Clans now have levels that could earn you perks, prestige, and fancy badges. And you could customize your clan badge with the new badge editor feature. You better have updated your device as well because April 30th required system versions raised to iOS 5.11. A new anti-air defense, the Air Sweeper, was also then added, as well as the Dark Spells Factory on July 1st. The Poison Spell, Earthquake Spell, and Haste Spell were also added a new Titan League, and the ultra-prestigious Legend League tournaments for top players at 5,000 trophies were also now attainable. And then, on December 11th, the Clash of Clans released one of the biggest updates ever. They really spoiled us for Christmas this year. We got Town Hall 11. And no, that's not the only thing. We also got two new defenses, the Grand Warden and Eagle Artillery. These then became some of the most powerful and strategic additions ever in Clash of Clans history. They also allowed for a longer attack time to compensate for the bigger Town Hall. 2016. What a great year. Loot carts, the treasury, and daily star bonuses were all new additions to the game on January 26th. March 21st introduced the Bowler, who's pretty self-explanatory, along with a bunch of war updates and new defense levels. May 24th gave us a new friendly challenge option to just attack clanmates for practice, competition, or just plain fun. They didn't cost gold or consume troops, spells, heroes, or traps. You also wouldn't earn resources, trophies, or other bonuses, though. We also got two new troops, the Miner and the Baby Dragon, as well as a new spell, the Clone Spell, and a new Dark Spell, the Skeleton Spell. Moving on to October 12th, Friendly Wars were also added allowing any two clans to battle with custom settings and arrangements. A new defense tower was also added, the Bomb Tower from Clash Royale, as well as 25 more walls for Town Hall 11. The last update for 2016 came on December 19th, and this update brought lots and lots of balancing and level upgrades. We also got some cool new temporary items, including the infamous Santa Surprise spell, a new freeze trap, and a troop called the Ice Wizard. Of course, these were all temporary and are no longer available in the game, but a fun new addition nonetheless. Alright, Year 6 2017 was quite a large expansion with many updates. The first update on January 16th just included minor bug fixes, but it was important regardless as it prepared us for the next big update on May 22nd. This update brought us an all-new mode with the Builder Hall. This update brought us two new defenses, the Multi-Mortar and the Archer Tower switch between fast attack and long range. Four new buildings were added, the Crusher, the Push Trap, the Gym Mine, and the Clock Tower. We also got two new abilities available to upgraded troops. The Sneaky Archer Cloak made her invisible to enemy defenses, much like the Archer Queen's ability, and the Boxer Giant Power Punch making his first attack do great damage. But wait, there's more. We got two new troops, the Bomber and Cannon Cart, and also a new hero, the Master Builder, who can join a battle in his battle machine with an electric hammer ability that smashes enemy buildings to bits, along with the Builder's base. In addition to that, we also received a new battle mode called Versus Mode. This new attacking style lets you take on opponents in a head-to-head -head attacking competition. Similar to Clan Wars, both competitors attack one another and the best attack wins the prize, and resources won't be lost on defense. And lastly, we got some new game mechanics. June 27th was also quite a large update, introducing Builder Hall Level 6, a new Night Witch troop, and a defense tower called the Roaster. Fast forward three months later, in their next update on September 27th, Builder Hall 7 was released along with the new defense towers, the Giant Cannon, and the Dropship. October 11th's update allowed us to see who was online, challenge our clanmates to friendly battles in the Builder base, and give us new level limits, not to mention visual changes for Town Hall 11 troops and buildings. And the last month of the year ended with, of course, the seasonal event, bringing us some new decorations and the return of the temporary units such as the Ice Wizard. 
Along with that, we also received a new feature called Clan Games, allowing members of a clan to complete challenges that yield them points which unlocks rewards. 2018 started on February 1st in honor of the Chinese New Year, which came to Clash of Clans as a lunar festival. Fireworks and fortune trees would spawn in your village as well as a new festive loading screen. March 5th was the next large update which brought Builder Hall 8 as well as a new defensive building, the Mega Tesla. The new Super P.E.K.K.A., extra traps and buildings, and introduced a new AI merchant called The Trader, who frequented your village to peddle his exotic wares. June 11th was also a major update. Starting off, we got Town Hall 12, along with the Siege Machines and Siege Workshop. We also received three new attackers, the Wall Wrecker, the Battle Blimp, and the Electro Dragon. Players were now given the opportunity to change their name more than once, the first time free, and each time after, the price would increase by 500 gems to a max of 10,000 gems. Clan updates included a new sleep mode that kept your reinforcements safe until you needed them, the ability to copy and save a clanmate's base layout, and clan leaders were no longer able to leave a clan without assigning a new leader beforehand. Alright, after some balance changes and upgrade times reduced, the updates returned after the summer on October 23rd and introduced Clan War Leagues. Clan War Leagues is a type of clan wars where your clan would battle against eight other clans for a chance to earn League Medals. Now, what are League Medals, you might ask? They were a new form of currency. League Medals could be used in the new League Shop to purchase exclusive decorations and the new Hammer Magic items. Along with magic items, a new trap was added, the Tornado Trap, along with a new potion, the Clock Tower, and 25 all-new single-player goblin villages. December 10th introduced a new Dark Elixir troop called the Ice Golem, a new spell, the Bat Spell, a new Siege Machine, the Stone Slammer, and new magic items, the Shovel of Obstacles, and the Hero Potion. After all that, 2019 started off pretty slow, as the first few months were just a bunch of balance changes and maintenance, but on April 2nd, we got Season Challenges and updates to Clan War Leagues. On June 18th, Builder Hall reached level 9 and included a new builder-based defense called the Lava Launcher, along with a new builder-based troop, the Hog Glider, and a new building, the Auto Hut. A few new potions entered the League Shop, including a Training Potion, Research Potion, and the cost of the Builder Potion increased. A new training mode titled Practice Mode was also added as a way to help players use different attack strategies and an upgrade to sharing base layouts by using base deep linking either externally or within their clan. October 16th brought along a new clan recruitment feature, allowing players in clans to add a bunch of labels to their profile to describe their playstyles, making it easier for players to receive invites and for clans to search for players. Along with that, the UI underwent a massive overhaul for player profiles, clan profiles, and other quality of life changes. December 9th became the year's final update and it ended with a bang. Introducing Town Hall 13. This added the Royal Champion, the Scattershot, the Siege Barracks, and a new troop, the Yeti. Now, 2020. It's now been 10 years since the game first began production. March 30th was the first big update for this year, introducing Super Troops. These basically allowed you to power upgrade existing troops into bigger and super versions of themselves. June 22nd added a new Dark Elixir troop, the Headhunter, along with the option to upgrade new super troops, the Inferno Dragon and Super Witch. Sceneries also underwent a bit of an upgrade. You were now given the option to change your scenery through the Town Hall. And loot carts now accumulated loot over 90 days, giving you a fat paycheck whenever you were ready to collect it. October 12th gave us more Super Troops, including the Super Valkyrie and Super Minion. Skeleton Barrel returned temporarily, and heroes would now always guard the village, healing automatically after taking a defense. A new age verification was also added for accounts created in the United States. And then December 7th and 8th added a new Siege Machine, the Log Launcher, as well as an Invisibility Spell. This update also included two new Super Troops, the Super Wizard and the Ice Hound, along with a new magic item, the Super Potion. And just like that, 2020 was over. 2021. As always, the first few months were nothing but a few maintenance updates and balance changes. However, on April 12th, we received Town Hall 14, along with the Giga Inferno now dropping poison bombs that deal damage, slow enemy attacks, and movement speed. We also received a new building, the Pet House, along with four ready-to-buy pets for heroes. These four were the Lassie, Electric Owl, Mighty Yak, and Unicorn. Builder Huts now became weaponized so you could level them up and use them in battle. On the 15th of June, we received two new troops, the Dragon Rider and the new super troop, the Rocket Balloon. On the 27th of September, we got another super troop, the Super Bowler. 
And finally, on December 9th, we received the Super Dragon Troop, along with a new Siege Machine, the Flame Flinger. More level upgrades, and walls could now be upgraded to level 15. Now, for 2020. This year started on February 16th and involved many quality of life changes. Heroes now had an extra life, but other than that, leaders and co-leaders of a clan could now see approximately how many clan members have logged onto the game. Some extra quality of life changes, like being able to sort the viewing order of tabs on your user profile, a music and sound slider was finally added, and Facebook was removed from the game. May 2nd was the next update where Clan Capital was brought into the game. A game mode where all clan members build a clan village and battle together. Along with that, a new currency was introduced called the Capital Gold, which essentially can be used to restore ruins and upgrade your capital buildings. It can also be collected and manufactured in the new building next to the air blimp, the Forge. This update was one of the biggest updates in Clash of Clans history. Lots of new content was introduced, along with other balance and bug fixes. June 27th also brought many new changes. The developers removed all elixir and dark elixir training costs for troops, spells, and siege machines. This was done on purpose to encourage experimentation when attacking enemy village. So, you'll be able to try out new strategies and tactics without having to worry about spending valuable resources. National flags were also removed from the game as the game was a fantasy game and the developers wanted to keep the Clash universe separate from real life references. Many new clan capital changes were also included in this update along with some additional scenery changes and improvements. 2023, we finally made it. So, let's take a look at what's new and improved for this year so far. Well, it says right here, just some minor bug fixes and balance changes. And that is it for the history of Clash of Clans. On screen now is a playlist of other videos like this about other games. Thank you for watching to the end of this video.